So, Mark, did you see that video of the UFO hotel under construction in Baker, California? They announced this thing like a decade ago, and I don't know what's been going on, but it seems like it's finally almost done. It looks really cool. Yeah, the the beef jerky stand looks amazing. I have never heard of this, but it seems like they have pretty good beef jerky, and it looks cool, but it looks like small. What are they going to have, like four or five rooms in there? It, it looks like kind of tiny for a hotel. Looks kind of like a prison, and there is a prison out in Baker, so maybe they'll just move the prisoners over. I don't know. There's no concepts of what the rooms will look like, so it's hard to tell what it'll be in the end. Is this all just from Disney Star Wars land that failed, and they just brought it over here now, finally? <laughs> <laughs> So another week and more layoffs to talk about, this time at Fountain Blue. There was some chatter on social media that they are laying off people in different departments, kind of railing against management for their lavish lifestyles as they cut back and saying they promised employees there would, be, there would not be layoffs. I think layoffs at this point are still pretty common. It doesn't seem like there's a huge amount, but there is chatter. People seem unhappy with uh, Fountain Blue right now. Yeah, I don't know how anybody can make that claim when you're opening a new property anyway. Like, you're going to have layoffs. You're going to overhire. There's some people that just won't make it. So it, saying that makes me feel kind of like there's shadiness happening right off the jump. Like, if you're anyone applying for a place and they say there will be no layoffs, don't trust that person. But yeah, kind of sad to see. And it, it seems like there isn't a, a like a high morale there. And we've talked about that in the past where just everybody doesn't seem to be getting quite what they had been promised and they're just not doing as busy. And I think a lot of it's just them thinking they'd be busier, new place, super fancy, thought they'd get all the whales and it just didn't work out that way. Yeah, this is pretty typical with casinos. Even Cosmo struggled for years and years and years. And I think that's a pretty good comparison here. So I don't think the sky is falling. We also got confirmation on that rumor we talked about a couple of shows ago with Venetian laying off top level executives and that seems to be confirmed although they say less than 50 people and basically this is a restructuring to save money that was the confirmation and that's sort of what we speculated at those uh, old time executives cost a lot yeah only 50 people so it, it looks like they were just head hunting for the higher ups that maybe it was time for them to move on or they thought like it was redundant going back to fountain blue a little bit i'm still curious like if they're struggling this much why did they pay so much for that back property or or say they would what are they even going to use that for? That still blows my mind. It's, it's the most crazy thing of 2024 in Vegas, in my opinion, a decision making. I don't understand what it is, what they're going to use it for and why they paid so much for the butt end of that property. I think they didn't want somebody else building the hotel there because they think they're essentially getting the tower that's part of that development. There's so many developments on the strip. You know, we have LVXP to follow up on and. You know, it's almost like you forget about all these projects as they come and go because there's so many of them. But uh, yeah, we'll see how Fountain Blue does. I expect everything will be okay. And Venetian, we shouldn't be surprised by these cuts. This is what's going to happen. We discussed that previously. Let's move over to the airport. There's some good news for flyers in Las Vegas. Opening the middle of next year is the Sapphire Lounge by the club. That's Chase's Lounge. That's going to be in the Seagates. Construction walls are already up. It's going to be by C1. Also, the Capital One Lounge is under construction in the D-Gates. That's probably going to open. They haven't announced a date, but sometime in 2025. And then finally, for the F1 events or whatever, Chase is opening a temporary lounge at Aria starting November 16th. If you have one of their higher tier cards, you can get in for free. So maybe I'll have to go check that out. But very good news if you're liking lounges. The Centurion Amex Lounge, always crowded. This will help. Yeah, the, the lounge at Las Vegas isn't the greatest. Uh, Centurion, always busy. So good to see these. Uh, I've been to Capital One lounges. I love them. Uh, they're great. I have not been to a Sapphire lounge, but they look great. So I think both of these are better than Centurion lounges. At least I can say for sure Capital One is, in my experience. I, I feel like Sapphire is as well. So maybe, you know, <laughs> we'll see the Centurion not have anybody in it pretty soon. And the good news on the Sapphire lounge, it's in the Seagates where Southwest Flyers are which is separate from where Centurion is. The, the Capital gates. One is sort of near there. Yeah, but at least they're going to have a Chase Lounge now. <laughs> so good news. <laughs> that, that, Chase it, <laughs> it doesn't make what? sense. The Sapphire Reserve Flyers are not are not Southwest Flyers. Like, card holders are not Southwest Flyers. It's the worst place to put it, I swear. Hey, uh, Capital One got to the other space first. What can you do? So I have to be careful with this next story. Universal's Horror Unleashed. They... Uh, announced all of the details of the houses that, that they're going to have. They're going to horror <laughs> unleashed. Uh, there's going to be four houses, universal monsters, the Texas chainsaw massacre, 
Scarecrow the Reaping, and Blumhouse's The Exorcist Believer. And then you're gonna have four themed areas around the houses where they'll have live entertainment and food. This is year round, high level quality stuff from Universal. And I can't wait to watch the horror get unleashed. Yeah, it looks really cool. I mean, can I say that it's like, you know, a haunted house, but a better version? Am I gonna upset somebody by, you know, saying it looks just like a haunted house, but, you know, a permanent fixture? definitely better props and costumes and all that stuff. Like, I think it's going to, it's much better than that, but that's kind of the vibe that you're getting from it. And then they have these other areas to hang out in. It sounds really cool. Definitely want to check it out. We joked about Meow Wolf, uh, you know, a couple episodes ago and how I just went to the bar because it was so cool. <laughs> and I, I feel like this is going to have the same type of setup. You know, it's going to have a really cool bar, maybe some, some bands and stuff that are dressed up for the show and everything. I think it'll be something unique, uh, you know, worth checking out. And they have announced it's going to open in 2025, but no specific date yet. These are essentially haunted houses. There's no doubt about it. Universal's famous for their Halloween Horror Nights, and they do, you know, better than basically anybody else, and this is going to be their permanent installation. So, yeah, haunted houses on steroids, high-quality, theme park-level quality haunted houses here. And, yeah, an interesting experience, so... This is their first venue of this type, and they chose Vegas, and uh, finally 2025 confirmed. That's good because they built the building, and then it sort of was sitting there forever, and I'm glad to see that they're finally going to finish the inside. Is there a, a fancy way to say haunted houses like putt-putt and mini golf? Should we call it like haunted mansion? I don't know. Haunts. They call them haunts. <laughs> okay. So let's head downtown to Cashman Field. That's the historic old baseball stadium. It used to be home of the Las Vegas 51s. More recently, there's been soccer there with the Las Vegas Lights. It also has a huge convention center, a very unique property owned by the city of Las Vegas. And you can buy it. They're taking bids through November 19th for the property. Starting bid, $33.95 million. Over 50 acres of land there. It's unique. I mean, how often is it that you can buy a baseball stadium? Yeah, this is kind of strange. I, I, yeah. <laughs> where's the soccer team going to go? Are they still going to, I guess the new owner could keep them there or do they have plans to move? It's just kind of like, it seems random to be selling this. It's a massive thing. I don't know what you could use it for, you know, maybe to hold concerts or art stuff. Unexpected, right? Did you expect this to go up for sale? I had heard rumblings that it was somewhere on social media, so it didn't surprise me to see the story. But yeah, I mean, they're not really doing much with it. And I feel like it could be a great development for housing and stuff like that with the amount of land there. You know, I don't know who's going to do something with a field and a theater and a conference center that's all outdated and sort of not in an area that uh, draws a lot of people anymore. I just think like it's an asset that they don't know what to do with, so they're finally selling it. They obviously offered this land for some of the previous stadiums, like the NBA arena, I think even the A's, they offered this land for that, and nobody sort of wants it. So I think turn it into housing. So, you know, 40 million and you just come bulldoze it. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the Vegas way. As a reminder, we have our Patreon. $5 a month gets you access to our weekly after show, behind the channel, more Vegas talk, Lots of laughs. Patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas for all the information. And thanks to everybody who supports us over there. So sad times in Prim, apparently. I saw this video on social media. I got tagged on Twitter in it. And it says, I'm going to read the tweet because it's really sad. What goes on here? And it's a picture of the Prim Valley Casino. I stop to charge my car every month on the way home. And this place has a million lights on and never see anyone go in or out of the building. Google says it's open, but I never see anyone. And then you see this parking lot with one car. Heartbreaking. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. You know, how much are they spending just keeping the lights on? And, and maybe there's people inside that you, I don't know, but it doesn't sound good. And we didn't actually go in there when I was in the area, so I didn't get to see. You said it's depressing. We don't need to go over there, so we didn't. Yeah, I mean, people out there love Prim, hate Prim, but it's interesting to see it just like that. We also have an update on LVXP. That's what we talked about on the last show. Some of the planning documents got leaked, and so we got some basic ideas of what the structure was going to look like. But I guess that forced LVXP to release their full render, their promo video, where you can see a more fleshed-out version of this project. I also heard from... One of the people from Steelman Partners who's involved in this to confirm there is a casino there now, 2,605 hotel and condominium units, 752 feet tall. And here is the render. I love it, Mark. I liked it before. I really love it now. You are so wrong. This is the coolest new project on the Strip. Yeah, if they turn the roof into a slide or something or some type of ride. Uh, otherwise, it's like lights pointing up that nobody's going to see. 
it's the like one of the bigger screens in Vegas, but only for the like 200 people flying over it at any given time. I, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I don't I don't love the design. I like the lower level areas uh, with the trees and everything and and kind of stacked up with the, the shopping and all that. But I'm still going to say things that will never happen for ten thousand dollars, Alex. There's some architectural things that are interesting here. Like one of the buildings kind of gives me sands vibes of the old sands round building. You know, it's different. Like we see all these stupid blocky buildings, modern glass nonsense. This is at least different in that way. I like it. It does seem like they fit quite a lot onto that land as well, including the casino. We don't know how big it would be. So we still have a lot to learn about this project, funding a lot of stuff before it actually happens. But I don't know. I think that at least architecturally, it's very interesting. They have top level designers for the arena. They even watched the show to tell me that there was a casino in there. And so they're on top of things. <laughs> I do hope something good goes there. And I, if they do build this, I hope it's successful because, I, you know, we've said the north end of the strip needs to be more connected. This would help with that. But we've just seen Resorts World struggle, Fountain Blue struggle, the area struggle a little bit. And then you're going to put this massive, uh, you know, building down there, maybe having, you know, a chunk of them be condos will help out in that respect. And there are some other condo buildings in the area. So people do live there. It's a long road ahead. Hater, hater, hater. <laughs> Put a haterade. ride on the roof and we're good to go. Let's go. <laughs> so onto some foodie news, I suppose. And uh, Cote Vegas or Cote Vegas, I feel terrible. This is the number one steakhouse in America, apparently in New York. And they are coming to the Venetian. You it's just, a Korean steakhouse. You just cursed what? it because what was the chef that we I couldn't, said. we didn't know who he was. And then that thing closed in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, is apparently a really cool place and we got some renders. It's going into the walkway between Venetian and Palazzo. And uh, yeah, you can see what it's going to look like on the inside. It looks like a fancy upscale steakhouse. But it's good news. I mean, if you're talking the number one steakhouse in the country, getting its Vegas outlet, that's always big stuff. Yeah, Michelin star, all of that. So it's got the history behind it. It's a good brand, a well-known brand, a well-known chef coming in. And that's what we see in Vegas is if somebody has something that's really good in L.A., Miami, New York, they want to open a place in Vegas. This one looks like it could be one of the top tier type places in Vegas. Uh, it looks beautiful from the renderings and it's got the history behind it. So I think it'll do really well. Another feather in Venetian's food cap, I would say, having this. I did hear from somebody, and I haven't seen pictures. I'm going to try to get over there in this coming week, that the food court at Venetian has now closed. And as they build the food hall, somebody said that they put walls up. Haven't confirmed that, but maybe there's a chance that the food hall kills off the food court, Mark. Tragedy. Um, it's the same thing. <laughs> So Whataburger is expanding. They're going to have their second location in Vegas. This sort of happened with White Castle. We got the first one, and then I think now we have five or six. And Whataburger is kind of going to a more local location off of Bonanza Road in Nellis. Going to build a double drive through full proper Whataburger. I say in five years, we probably got a dozen of these places. I've still never been to a Whataburger. I know it's like beloved by a lot of people more so than the other ones that everybody talks about. So glad to see them expanding. Have you bet? Do you love it? Is it one that you go to? I haven't been since like 15 years ago. Tried it in Texas. It's beloved from Texas. I know a lot of people from there. I'm more of an in and out guy when it comes to the burgers. Don't like the fries there. I haven't tried the one here. I have been inside of there. It's a beautiful space, but I haven't eaten there. They have pizza too, weirdly, at the Whataburger on the Strip, but yeah, I expect with supply chains and stuff, once you get one, it's probably simpler to just put more. But less is what we're getting at Circus Circus at the buffet. These hours, John Maffey posted a picture. They are down to just Saturday mornings for brunch and then three nights on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This could be just for the slow season and the holidays. But uh, if you want your clown buffet, you got to go during these times. I'm kind of surprised that other buffets are open during the week, you know, especially this time of year. Usually it's busy Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe Thursday. Uh, but like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with the amount of food that you need to prepare, I, I just wouldn't see that it'd be feasible. So I think this makes a lot of sense and it is what it is. And I think it's a good move on their part. That buffet will always be special because it's the first place I ever tried cheesecake, blueberry cheesecake to be specific. Okay. Just uh, I know you really wanted to know that. <laughs> yeah. And finally, on food related news, Ocean One, we talked last month how they temporarily closed. Well, it's now official that they're closed for good. They say their lease has run out. This is sort of strange because it was very sudden and that they're looking for another location. Nothing that we haven't heard before from other places that never come back. But Ocean One closed. So all those three for one cocktails, all those great food specials, you better look elsewhere.
Yeah, always, you know, a beloved place, good place to pregame or get something cheap and always busy. So maybe they just weren't making enough money off of these these deals and everything to to pay the rent. It, it does seem sketchy because they, they were probably shut down for back pay or something, I would assume. You know, it was like one night that they were closed. And then a month later, they closed. Maybe they were trying to get some funding or something uh, to, to pay that up. That would be my guess. I doubt that the lease just ran out and they didn't know it. And, you know, a month ago they worried about, I don't know. It's just, it's a weird story. Yeah. And, you know, this is one of the more budget friendly options. All those people who write those budget friendly Vegas tips and guides, they have to update them because I feel like this was their go-to they advice. Won't. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely won't. So more sad news, Mr. Piffles. We talked on a couple of shows ago how Mr. Piffles 2.0 was taking over. And I guess maybe because Mr. Piffles was sick, we didn't know, but he passed away just before his 17th birthday. They did a memorial at the Flamingo, which was really nice and sad to see this little pup go. So many shows in Vegas and elsewhere entertaining so many. Such a cute little guy. Yeah, he, he's done so many cool things over the years. And, you know, on America, America's Got Talent, it was fun to watch him. And it, we talked about how they spent 60, he spent $60,000 cloning him which is an interesting story too, but sad to see uh, Mr. Piffles go. And are they going to have that there permanently? The little fixture, the dog, it's like mannequin piss, but for dogs, I think that's really cool. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I hope so. I, it, it looked neat and you know, he entertained so many, very popular in the community. And I saw a huge outpouring on social media of people upset about Mr. Piffles passing. So clearly this dog really reached other people and this act did as well, Piff the Magic Dragon and... Yeah, I, I say do it. I say leave it up there forever. Is Piff the next uh, Carrot Top, like, beloved long-term comedian that just kind of is a part of the, the city and, and hangs around forever, do you think? Yeah, he just has to clone himself, and then he can just uh, keep going forever. <laughs> it's going to cost more than 60 k And let's close with this. The Sphere earnings call. The Sphere had their earnings, and we'll go a little bit into the earnings, but there were some takeaways from the call with James Dolan that I thought were super interesting. Starting for the fiscal 2025 first quarter, which was the quarter that just ended, they reported revenues $227.9 million, which is $109.9 million more as compared to the prior year. And they had an operating loss of $117.6 million, or an adjusted loss after depreciation, all of that, of $10.2 million. So they're still losing a lot of money on this place on operating it. And that doesn't seem to be changing a little softer on ads in this quarter, although they say it's going to get better in the future. They talk about how they're going to start programming more multiple things on one day. So you might have the Eagles at night, but they'll still have the sphere experience during the day. So they're trying to maximize all of that. So a bright outlook, but still losing a lot of money. Yeah, but it, I mean, they're losing less than they were. So I, I think that's a step in the right direction. And I'm, it still blows my mind that they made $71 million on the experience because that means you're getting some return people going back for a second or third time, but also new people still coming all the time. But yeah, we've talked about this forever. Like you should have two different sphere experiences, two different movies, one early, one late, all that type of thing. And during the shows, like why haven't they thought about this before that they could do things early and then still have the shows at night? It just wasn't maximizing what they have available. Like you have a, a full day, fill it as much as you can. And then he talks about they're so busy with bookings in 2025 that they can't fit them in, but yet they haven't announced anything. And we're six weeks, weeks away. I call that kind of BS. Yeah. Dolan was doing some spin on this call for sure. Uh, you did mention 71 million in revenue off the sphere experience on 207 shows. So that's pretty good. I would say for a movie, yeah. he also talked about the U2 experience, the concert movie that that's done really well and that they're considering that for future acts. Also saying he wishes he could go back in time and get acts like the Beatles and film them properly to do this, but maybe hinting that they're going to go outside of just the acts that perform at the sphere and maybe filming other acts to show there. So a lot of interesting stuff there. They also recently announced the Sphere Abu Dhabi, which is a partnership with the government there. And he talked a little bit more about how they're going to get revenue from that, both from the consulting on building it and then from management going forward. What's interesting is Abu Dhabi's paying for the entire thing. And they said it's going to be very similar in size and scope to the Vegas Sphere. Yeah, I don't know that I'd want them managing it. It doesn't seem like they've done a, a super great job of managing this just coming after, you know, a year 
being like, oh, maybe we should do two things in one day. I guess they've learned their lessons along the line. So hopefully going forward, it's better, but a good deal for them and they can make some extra money and, and uh, you know, not have the risk that they had building the first one. Great deal for them. We know they don't have the money to build another $2 billion sphere, so they don't have to put up any of the money. They also got Abu Dhabi as like a tourism partnership with the Vegas sphere. So signed on as part of that partnership. So that does seem like a win-win for them and a really easy way for them to get a second sphere built and out into the ecosystem. And then they talk about wanting to build more. And as you said, that the acts are just knocking down their doors, according to James Dolan. He says, right now uh, we're struggling oh, with... <laughs> He says, right now we're struggling with 2025, just figuring out how we're going to get the people in who want to get in, the acts that want to get in. So he's saying, they're knocking down our doors. We have nobody to announce. We can't say anything right now. We yeah. are not going to release our secret sauce, he says, but not they're even knocking one. down our doors. Not even one. Can't even announce one. You have nothing. Eagles. That's it. That's all you got. You can't announce one, but yet you have so many that's flowing over the top. Come on. And he says you're going to see a lot of the Eagles, actually, when he was asked the question yeah, in the short term. You're just going to see got. a lot of Eagles. <laughs> we can't fit the other act in because the Eagles took it all up. Dead, do four more shows in between Eagles. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> on one hand, Dolan's a little full of crap. But on the other hand, I actually think this is a pretty positive move. Uh, we know the product is good. Uh, they're having more corporate events there, too. I think Delta says they're going to host something. They figured out the uh, exosphere, the advertising and sort of tweaking all of that. I think in the end, they're going to do well. I mean, they're delivering a really good product. And I think that's the key differentiator here. It's not like they said they were going to deliver something and then they cut it back like we had worried about. When everybody goes in, they realize that this is a, a neat place. And I think the longevity of it will be seen. And I think, you know, they have a lot of debt. That's really the problem. They have a lot of interest. They have to pay off a lot of debt, but they're figuring it out and they're not, you know, people are knocking down their doors. So can't wait to see those I, names. I do think that the Delta idea and stuff like that is, is interesting and something they should lean into a bit more. Could you imagine if like Steve Jobs was still alive and he wanted to announce a new iPhone thing or a new Apple thing, how cool it would be to do it inside the sphere. So I think they could, you know, come up with some things like that. And that's like, we're talking, do the movie in the day do an evening event, something like that. Even when you don't have a, a concert or a band uh, performing, you still have options and they just need to figure all that stuff out a bit more. It's like an airplane. When you buy this big expensive airplane, you have to utilize it and make sure it's flying enough hours and the sphere is the same yeah. thing. It costs too much money. It needs to constantly be utilized and they'll figure that out. So let us know what you guys think about anything we talked about today, the sphere earnings, those LVXP renders. Does that project look as good to you as it does to me or... Are you in Mark's camp on that? All of the food news, Ocean One closing, heartbreaking there. Leave a comment. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. We'll be back in a couple days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. We forgot to say Prim for Trim earlier. That's how you fix it. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Weekend. <laughs> Here, go play with these clowns while we gamble and, and eat some cheesecake. What a childhood it was. What a childhood it was. <laughs>